Hello, today we're going to go over Survey Buddy and what is it, why would we want to use it, and how to use it. So, what is it? Survey Buddy is an air propagation program that uses air propagation equations in the background to determine statistically the random error of our survey measurements and the output it gives us is how accurate relatively speaking is the coordinate that we're measuring to so why would we want to use it so there are a few situations in which it would be pretty beneficial to use um, say if a client has a, a specified precision of what he needs laid out and gives that to us say let's go five mils for example we can determine if we need to alter our field procedures or the equipment we're using to meet that precision. Um, another example would be, say, setting up a monitoring scheme. Um, if we want to detect a centimeter of movement, or if we want to detect a few mils of movement, again, we're going to we're going to treat those two situations differently. We're going to need different equipment, and we're going to need different field procedures. And also this program is going to tell us how to maximize, how to get the best precision we can from the equipment we have. So uh, how to use it. So uh, this first box we're looking at here is entering in your, your survey observations. So it would be the azimuth to the target point, the zenith angle, the slope distance, your height of instrument, your height of target, and the number of sets you're going to make to that point. Uh, your azimuth isn't going to make any difference in magnitude of your error, just direction, um, and neither will your height of instrument. The rest will affect the magnitude and direction of your error. The next box we're going to look at, titled Estimated Values, is there's four cells in here. So the first being the instrument centering error. So this is how well can you center your instrument horizontally over your control point? So is it a is it a well-defined control point with a, uh, a well-defined center, say a mag nail, for example, or is it a old rebar with no marking on top that has an oblong surface shape that you can't, you're, you're kind of guessing the center of and also is your instrument is the optical plummet in good condition are you using a laser plummet so these are all the factors you're going to need to take into account when choosing this value if I'm using a, uh, a well kept up instrument I'm going to kind of tend to lean towards one to two mils for my horizontal centering air um, target centering air so this is the the same error but from the target's perspective. So uh, are you using an old tri-brac that's been beat around in your in the back of your truck or is it a brand new tri-brac with a, a solid optical plummet on it that you really trust? Um, if you're using a prism pole, select that from the drop down. And this is going to assume that we can precisely center our prism pole on the center of the target and that the now the air introduced at the target from centering the prism pole on the point is going to come from the pole being out of plumb and it's a different set of equations and it's going to use a different set of parameters to calculate this and how it's going to affect the final coordinate position. The next two are the height of instrument, height of instrument measuring error and the height of target target measuring error. So uh, generally with an instrument, if I can measure to the bottom notch, I can assume it, you know, it's a well-defined mark that doesn't have a massive slant to it. I'm gonna kind of weight it a little bit better. I'm gonna assume that I can measure that a little bit better versus if I'm measuring to uh, a reflector side plate, you know, some of them don't even have a notch that you can really line up. You have to kind of eye out the center of the prism. You're not going to be able to, to measure that as accurate as precisely. So usually I, I will give the HI measuring uh, error for, I'll set that to about a mil or two. 
and if it's it depends it completely depends on what the what I'm measuring to for the height I target measuring error um, and also if I'm using a prism pole with locked in uh, graduations like the Leica GLS 12 for example I can trust that very precisely vertically so that also is going to come into play so this one it's it's completely what the equipment you're using you're just going to have to make that call on your own and how confident you feel you can measure that height of target to. Uh, the next are going to be the settings of the equipment you're using. So are you using a three second gun, a one second gun, a half second gun, a five second gun, etc. Uh, I, I usually use a two second gun so I'm going to go with that for today. And the EDM accuracy constant and the EDM accuracy scale part is that those are both just supplied to you from your manufacturer so my gun is a two mil plus or minus two ppm gun so that's what I'm, we'll start off at and tracking or standard mode so when you're in tracking mode every every measurement that the gun is taking to you is a single distance measurement but when you're in standard mode depending on how you have your data collector set up it's going to average three to five measurements. Uh, I think five's pretty typical. So that's what I have it set at for the equations that calculate this. Um, the reflector, so all reflectors have a different set of, set of accuracies, sorry, a set of precisions from the manufacturer. Um, I have a fairly extensive list in here with all the manufacturers, uh, stated settings put into put in so feel free to cycle through um, and hopefully you can see the prism that you're using if not reach out to me and i'll see if i can add that in and update the software as time goes on um, i typically if i'm trying to shoot for accuracy i like my gmp 101 i know it's a little less common uh, a lot of people run the the mini the gmp 111 and the GPR111 is pretty standard. So let's start off with that. Um, and bipod, so a bipod is gonna influence your plumb poleness. It's only going to uh, come into effect when you're using a prism pole. So if you're if you're not using a prism pole, set that to not, applica not applicable. And the program will know if you're manually entering in a target centering error, now you switched over to using a tri brack on a prism pole. Sorry, try back on a tripod. Tripod. Uh, I'm tend to use a prism pole more often than not with a bipod. So let's start off with that. And the prism pole level bubble level bubble sensitivity. That also is going to if affect your pole plumbness error. Um, the pole I usually use and probably that you'll be using as well is the standard twenty minute level bubble sensitivity. Uh, the bigger Topple poles, some of them use 40 minute, and some of the higher precision poles use eight minute. The vast majority is 20 minute. So once you have all your settings put into place, the program is gonna tell you your delta coordinates from your setup point and the standard deviation of those relative coordinates. So in standard deviation, that's 68% confidence. So 68% of the time, the the uh, point you're measuring to is going to be within four mils, within seven mils, and within six mils of the true location in the northing, easting, and elevation. Uh, this next box is the same values but at 95% confidence. And the coordinate air ellipse is at 95%. This next box is relative to this graph here, and it's basically telling you. Um, at 95%, the point you're measuring is going to be somewhere within this ellipse if this ellipse is centered on the true location of the point. So 19 times out of 20 times, you're going to measure somewhere in this ellipse if this ellipse was centered on the actual true location. And uh, the semi-major axis will obviously be the longer side of the ellipse, the semi-minor, the shorter, and the azimuth of the major axis will be the azimuth of the major axis. Um, these two boxes are telling you the vertical coordinate precision 
at one standard deviation plus or minus. So this is going to be this value right here. It's just in a bigger box because that's really what you care about. And this horizontal coordinate position to 68% confidence, one standard deviation plus or minus, is the semi-major axis divided by two because again, this is 30 mils from here to here where we want the plus or minus from the center. So that's 15 mils. And this is at 95%. So that 15 mils is going to get divided by 1.96, which is the the fact the, the scale factor to get you from one standard deviation to 95%. And that is going to get us down to 8 mils. So these are really the two boxes that you care about most when you're using this program. And I also put this these two uh, values in here. So say if you mi mismeasure your temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, this is the extra bit of error that would be in addition to everything else we've talked about in the horizontal distance. This is given an observation at 500 meters. And again, if you uh, mismeasured your pressure by 10 millibars, this is the amount additional of error that would be introduced into your horizontal distance. The next three graphs are the distribution of error in the horizontal distance, vertical distance, and azimuth, and how they are made up from the sources of error. So we again, we've already went over these eight sources of error. We have the instrument centering error, the target centering error, or the pole plumbness error. It's either or in that situation the height of instrument measuring error, the height of target measuring error, the pointing and reading error, that's from the instrument manufacturer, same with the EDM error, and the reflector centering error. So for example, for the horizontal distance, we can see that 1.2 mils of the total error is coming from the reflector centering. 1.4 mils of the total error is coming from the pole plumbness error. And same, for example, say the azimuth, 2.6 seconds of the total error, or 83%, is coming from the pointing and reading error. So say if we, if we wanted to reduce this 2.6 seconds, we would want, there's basically two ways we could do that. We could introduce, or sorry, we could increase the amount of observations, or we could use a better instrument. So say we only have our two second instrument, Right now we're at plus or minus eight mils and we're trying to shoot for that three mil mark. So something we could do is we can increase our number of sets from one to five. So that has us down to four mils and it greatly reduced our, uh, our distribution of air from our pointing and reading air. We're trying to reduce the air by one more mil. Um, we can see that a reflector centering air our reflector centering error is also giving us quite a bit of error in this situation. What if we grabbed that better prism we have in our truck? So our GMP 101, that got, uh, it, it brought that error down quite a bit, but we're still at four mils. And our pole plumbness error, we can see that's making up quite a big portion of error now. So let's see what we're using. We're using our prism pole with a bipod but we're at 1.5 meters. So what if we took away our bipod, which is gonna greatly increase our air, but we reduce our height of instrument to a single mini extension, 0.1. So there we go, we, we're down to our three mils as specified by our customer, sorry, our client. And um, basically the vast majority of air now is being made up from our pointing and reading air but you know, we're kind of maxed out. We're, we only have a two second gun. We're already taking five sets of observations. That's the best we can do in this situation until we can upgrade our equipment. So that's just a quick example of how you can use Survey Buddy to, to figure out if you need to change your field procedures or if you need to change your equipment or a combination of the two to meet a specified precision. So I, uh, I hope this helps. If you have any suggestions how I can improve the program, or if you have any questions on the air propagation equations, 
that are being used in the background, please don't hesitate to reach out. I have a, a lengthy white paper that I made up that goes over in detail all the equations that were used and it's, it's I'd be happy to pass that along.